Hello, world. Welcome back to Golf Subpar. Colt Nost and Drew Stoltz and Sleaze. Another week, another W for us. Back to back to back. Is that no, three? Three out of four. Three out of four. I, I thought it was three That's in a row. Back to back we, to back. Yeah, we skipped the island. It's a sleaze beat. We'll call the sleaze beat when you don't go yeah. at three out of three in a row. But we've been feeding y'all our FanDuel picks, and once again, the QBE shootout. We pick another one with Jason Kokrak and Kevin Na. Yeah, what a call on that. I mean, Kokrak's been as hot as anybody. Kevin Na was kind of the question mark. Hadn't played in a lot of weeks, nursing a bit of an injury. Didn't seem to be a problem. Comes out yesterday. They close it out with just 12 out of 13 birdies coming home. And seven of those first nine were Kevin Na. So no big deal. clearly the layoff, not much I mean, of an issue. If you wanted to make some nice Christmas money, some nice holiday bonus money, should have just been following our FanDuel picks. That's what Kevin Na needs. We, we talked about it earlier on radio, how much he's made in his career. I mean, mm-hmm. good God. And that, this is unofficial. This yeah. don't even count. But, man, that's, Kids, a, that's right. a fun tournament. The guys are so laid back. They're so relaxed. They're out there joking around, having fun. I saw where Max Homa said, man, I wish – somebody said, I wish Max Homa and Kevin Kisner would have been mic'd up. He goes, I don't because <laughs> it wouldn't have been well. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's, it's a cool way to end the year, man. And now we're not going to have another um, real PGA Tour event until January. I know. We got a little bit of a break, but there will be some golf being played. We didn't know it for a while, but since we had our last show, Tiger – Back in action wow. at the PNC with Charlie. I feel like it was just a couple of weeks ago we saw him flicking the little short iron on the range. And I thought at the time, I was like, yo, this is day one. This is him, his road to recovery. This is the first thing he's done. And then fast forward a week later, he's hitting Fairway Woods and Drivers down at the Hero. I was like, damn, he's he's way ahead of where I thought he was when I saw that first video. No doubt. I, I, I'll go out on a limb and say this will be the highest TV ratings ever for the PNC Championship. Would have to agree. <laughs> Got to think they pair them with JT and Mike. Hope so. I mean, that's... That's I want to see Charlie Chirp and Justin. Yeah, dude, you're going to like every every shot Tiger hits is going to be on there. You might as well put them with the people that they're most comfortable with. Yeah, so man. that's got to happen. Man, it's going to be a lot of fun between that and NFL football. I mean, we got a nice little bowl set of TV. season coming quick. Same game parlays will be fired. Mm. Tis the season. And we have a very special guest this week, Sleaze. The Ragin' Cajun, Brandon Stokely. And by the way, before we get to Brandon Stokely, because this man could probably use a few extra golf balls. Yeah, that ain't enough for him. And did you know, major champions John Rahm and Phil Mickelson both played the Callaway Chrome Soft X. Chrome Soft is absolutely incredible. I play it myself. It goes right through the wind. It's absolutely incredible around the greens. Goes far, even for me. It's shocking, I know. Hmm. But you got a couple options, sleeves. You got the Chrome Soft, and you've got the Chrome Soft XLS, which is players that want a firmer golf ball, lower spin on full shots. That's the ball for you. Chrome Soft isn't just better for major champions. It's better for everyone, even Brandon Stokely. Find your Chrome Soft at CallawayGolf.com slash Chrome Soft. So, ladies, this episode, mm-hmm. tell you what, I think y'all came in a little warm, which, we were, which I like. We weren't cold, I'll say that. <laughs> but this guy, I mean, he's, he's a radio guy, so he gets it. He's mm-hmm. got a big personality. He loves to talk and has incredible stories. We came in. We've been talking about doing this for a long time. We we're going to do it on Zoom, but he's like, hold up. You know, I'm coming down in a few weeks. Let's do it then. So we held on to him. He's one of those guys that's going to be way better in person. We go back probably 10, 12, 13 years, something like that. I've gotten to know him. There's not, we've had him on our radio show a lot of times. There's just not a better dude, man. Like just going out, having fun. Not the world's greatest golfer, but you get done with 18 with him and you had a, you had a time. We'll and see. he will lead straight into the gin table, by the way, and he'll sit with you till the sun comes up. That's I love that. some of the He's best. A Cajun, he just man. gets it, dude. He knows the locker room. He knows his way around. He gets it. I love that so much, man. And I will have to say, just listen, I don't I don't want anybody to think we're being insensitive or anything. We filmed this episode before the tragic passing of uh, Demarius Thomas, and he was brought up in the episode towards the end. And obviously we didn't know that was going to happen before. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace to that guy. I mean, I got I, I was around him one night, obviously. Stokes, very, very close with him. Yeah. I know that was a tough one, but just didn't want anybody to think we were being insensitive um, about Demarius Thomas. Yeah, this was recorded prior to that, and nothing you know bad was said about DT, clearly, because it's not a no, lot bad nothing. you can say uh-huh. about the guy. Stoke was really close to him. I talked to Brandon you know, after the deal happened, and he was as shocked as everybody but one of those one of those rare guys that you know when his career ends or he passes away the first things people talk about wasn't his career as good as he was he was a hell of a wide receiver but it's all just like the way he made you feel the way he interacted with people that's uh he's a different dude so yeah i know this hit stoke hard i know this hit a lot of people Mm -hmm. hard but uh yeah he was the one jason duffner and myself went out with the night i thought i missed the cut in vegas right he He was was a part of the legendary story good dude to go out (laughs) with you guys were safe man a good one gone way too soon but just wanted to get that out there All right, let's get to it. Here's Brandon Stokely on Golf Subpar. Okay, we got good news for any of you out there who are bad on a little back injury. We got a tool here that's going to work for you. I've been using it for a long time. A lot of the top instructors in golf are using it too. It's called True Turn Pro. And if you're tired of not playing your best because of issues with your back, this is the thing for you. So, Colt, there's a lot of different uses for this thing. 
I tend to be a guy, as you well know, I don't show up to the golf course super early, you don't per say. se. I'm not a big warmer upper. I show up, rely on natural talent, and I get it done. However, there are times where I show up, first three, four, five holes, don't quite have it yet, not loose, find myself in a bit of a hole, got a couple presses on the line. Sometimes it doesn't work out in my favor. With this thing, I love this thing. You can use it for a lot of things. It can be a swing aid. It can, it can do a variety of different things. I use this thing specifically for stretching. And if I use it for like, I'm no joke, five minutes before, if I'm just in my house on the phone, whatever, kind of scrambling around, you throw this thing on, you use it in a number of ways. I use it for five minutes. By the time I get to the golf course, I've made some, basically, it's like I've made some swings before. I feel loose. I feel better. And the thing I really like about it is a lot of guys think they have a big turn. You know, you can kind of fake it with your arms. Your arms keep going back, but the turn actually doesn't change. This thing shows you what it's like, hence the name true turn to actually have a true shoulder turn. And you can just feel like the power loading up in your back, which is different than the way most of us swing it. Yeah, you know, I've actually been using this thing for a little while. Went to the PT the other day. Girl was giving me a little flexibility test. She's like, my God, your T-spine is so flexible. I'm like, true turn pro. Whatever. Yeah, Get ever heard of it? Scoop it's it. incredible. And it's the holiday season. Last minute holiday gift. Nothing better than the true turn pro. And if you act fast... You can get a great deal by going to the golf.com pro shop and using the show code subpar to get 10% off. Don't ever go home again knowing you could have played better if your back were better. Get the true turn pro and start playing your best golf ever. Here's Brandon Stokely on golf subpar. Been waiting on this one for a while. We got the, the raginous Cajun to ever do it with us here today. Two time Super Bowl champ, current Bronco radio host, incredible golfer. Guy basically put Peyton Manning on the map. Brandon Stokely. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for finally having me. I mean, look, I've been waiting for this opportunity now. I don't know for how long. Been like calling you. Mm -hmm. You ghost me on the phone calls. Like, who's this? I'm like, Drew, it's your buddy Stokely. Can I get on the podcast? So I appreciate it. Sleaze is a busy man. I know. First off, he just said incredible golfer. When I was doing all my homework, he said, you're fucking terrible. (laughs) What are you talking about? I told you. I got to rewrite right now. I got to rewrite everything. I I lie in all the intros. I got to fluff them before I bring them back down. I'm an awful golfer, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not a good golfer, uh, but I I love to play. So, Well, I'll be honest. Raging Cages, Lafayette, one of my favorite places I've ever been. It's a great spot. Great food. Great Sneaky. people. I like food. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a really good spot. Really good people. And you know, I grew up there. Uh, fifth grade. All my family's there from fifth grade on, and went to college there. Um, so lo- lo- love Lafayette, Louisiana. Good spot. Wait till he gets a little more of that drink down right there. And that <laughs> case, the Cajun, <laughs> Cajun. Cajun. accent right. starts coming out a little bit. We're more. gonna need subtitles for this one by the end of it. But let's well, since yeah, we're ahead. on the we're on the raging Cajun thing. I want to I want to know a little bit. Say. Brandon Stokely one day got good enough at golf and was as good as he said he was. You won the Masters. Give me a, a Cajun Ooh. dish you would have at the Champions Dinner. Oh, that's good. Like I would that. have uh, crawfish. Okay. Got to do a crawfish ball. See, I think in that? Augusta they might peel them for you. You won't even have to go right. to the Right. That would be them. good. Yeah. A little crawfish <laughs> boil. Um, give me a little fried catfish. Um, a little uh, chicken sausage gumbo to start. A little I'm, appetizer. I'm okay with all this. Yeah. Um, and fried catfish with some crawfish. All right, that's yeah. it. Are you, you a guy? A lot of complaints. Crawfish. You you want it real spicy? No, no. I'm not a spicy person. Are you the sauce? Like what they do? Ketchup and mayonnaise. They mix it together. I got my stuff? own sauce. My Ooh. grandfather made up a sauce, so I got my own <laughs> sauce that he does. I don't do that one. That's kind of mainstream now. Okay. But uh, my grandfather had was a little horseradish and Worcestershire, and you know uh, horseradish. Yeah, and yeah. Bur- <laughs> yeah, get you, get the get, clear those nostrils out a little mm-hmm. bit. Uh, so that's kind of you know that that's the specialty. A little bit I different like than that one. So I would like to come to your champions dinner. And yeah, dude, it's a good you, one. You don't need that many practice rounds because you've been playing down there. You've been to Augusta. Been there. Yeah, what, been there. What a kind few of times. numbers did you put? He just got back too. I just got back. What'd yeah. you shoot down there? Let's well, figure I, out how well, many we got to well, shoot. Well, my best round was low eighties. Made three birdies on, on three of the four par fives. Um, so just overpowering it. Yeah, just you know. I mean, just that's what I do. Yeah. I do. We, I can't play from the tips. You know, I can't go all the way back. So, got to go to the uh, the members' tees. Mm-hmm. Um, but low 80s, uh, I mean, the place is unbelievable. I mean, it's the best. You can't beat it. You know, you see it every year on TV, and you know all the shots. You know all the history there. So, it's uh, it's the best. Isn't I mean, it crazy, though? Better. Like, you, you obviously watch that place. But like, Pebble Beach is iconic as well. But when you're going around Pebble Beach, you don't think about all those crazy shots you've seen on TV, all those incredible shots. When I played it, I'm like, oh, this has happened here. This happened right. here. It's unbelievable. Well, because it's year in. Every year, yeah, I guess every it's true. year, the Masters, and the Masters is must-see TV. And you know all the great shots. There's so much history there. And 
I think that's why when you go play it, you just you know every shot, you know every every great moment. Tigers chip in, fill out of the pine straw, you know all those things because it's there every year. They don't have something that yeah. pebble every single year. They should just the pro am. Just the pro am. You, you're a pebble vet I too. At you the actually pro-am. shot maybe the highest round in the history of pebble beach for me last time. <laughs> that I is not you possible, know. dude. He listen, birdied number one. What do you think listen, you shot that day? Listen, I, we were partner. partners. We yeah. were partners, oh and you. God, I, I need you on a few holes. I need you on a. Few, it was really windy. <laughs> Seventeen it was, of them. <laughs> it was. It was really windy. I didn't have my best day. It was a little bit windy, and the, the fade that I usually have wasn't wasn't working that well for me. It was it was a tough <laughs> round for me. Uh, that place can eat you up, you know, if it starts blowing a little bit, and it was cold and windy and it 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 certainly didn't help but i i needed a little help from you you had it all day no, i need you one or two times no. like you get two shots i here. think that might have been six for four that might have been i <laughs> <laughs> sorry partner i'm out i think that might have been our first or second round playing together They're telling me about this drew stoltz played the golf at tcu this great golf i'm like okay great let's see what it's all about we were partners like perfect and like, you know, bogeys aren't going to cut it, right? I mean, like, bogey golf, I, I just well, expected more. I, I expected was, more. I was super tight. Brandon, you'll see, has a tendency to exaggerate things. By the, but that definitely wasn't the first round this of golf This might be played. my favorite guess. Because we're going to get into the you. first round a little bit later. And oh, the fir- mind, I remember yeah, the first don't round. Don't bring it up. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm gonna I remember the first round. That was... Um, that was uh, that was a tough uh, bad shot by me. <laughs> we'll get, tough, we're tough, gonna tough. we're gonna get all to that, but let's go. But we're talking about Lafayette. Yep. You got a cool story how you got to the league. I mean, you were in high school. You didn't even play football for a couple of years. Then you go to Louisiana Lafayette, break out, and end up going to the league out of nowhere. Like, talk about coming up and when when did the NFL become realistic? Yeah, you know, I played my freshman year. I played quarterback growing up. My dad was a quarterback at LSU, and so I was like, okay, I'm gonna play quarterback. Play quarterback, and we ran the option a lot. I was small. Couldn't throw the ball 20 yards. And um, my freshman year of high school, we weren't a very good high school program. And I was just like, man, this is just not for me. You know, football is not for me. And I decided not to play. I was like, I'm, I'm done playing football. I'm just going to play basketball and baseball. Back then, you know, you play three sports. And yeah. went to a 5A school, um, Como High School. Shout out. Shout Como. out Como. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Como High School. A lot of listeners school. down there from That's Como. Right. That's right. We got real big yeah. in Como, yeah, dude. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so stopped playing. And we got it. We ended up getting a new coach in that brought a passing offense in. And nobody threw the ball uh, back then. And uh, he, he asked me to come out. They kept on asking me to come out and play. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to. And finally, uh, before my senior year, I said, you know what? I'll, I'll go out and try it. I'll play, try, try receiver and, and see how it goes. And really fell in love with it. And playing receiver for me came natural. My dad was a coach. And so that's all I did in the summertime, just play catch, play football. And so playing receiver became, it just was natural. I led the state in receptions that year and had a chance to go play f- football for my dad at college right there in the same hometown and said, you know what, I'll go for it and try it out and see how it goes. And um, it just started going really well. I redshirted my freshman year and then, you know, played four years. And uh, I started thinking about the NFL um, before my junior year. Started thinking that I might have a chance to play, but we were a small school and and still didn't – that's the NFL, you know. Didn't, didn't, didn't – thought that was a whole nother level. A lot of things would have to go my way. And I ended up tearing my ACL fourth game of the year at playing at Texas A&M. And uh, so that was a big blow. And came back my senior year and played pretty well and uh, ended up um, getting drafted in the fourth round by the Ravens. Yeah, I'm always interested about draft night because I think it's just so cool. I mean, obviously with the PGA Tour, there's no draft. You just have to right. go out there and try to earn your way out there. But with the draft, what, what was that like for you and your family? Like, was fourth round where you're like, hell yeah, that's incredible? Or did you slip further than you thought? Well, yeah, that's a, that's a, a good story. Back then, you know, it was – uh, one through three the first day, and then the next day was four through seven. And so it was just a two-day draft and went to the combine, and the the whole thing was how fast was I going to run, you know, what was going to be my numbers, and, and they were projecting me to go to the fourth round, but if I did well at the combine, maybe I could sneak up in the third round. And, and this was 1999. There wasn't a whole lot involved into it like it is now where you have all these people and – and, and all of that. And I went out to the combine and, and ran well. All my shuttle drills, quickness stuff uh, was really well. I did really good in that stuff. So I was hoping that I was sneaking that third round. And so the, the, the first round was going on and, and, and the third round comes and goes. And there was a couple receivers that got drafted that I felt I was better than. And it was, I was just, I was depressed. 
Mm. Went to bed that night just depressed, and then I, I was like, okay, am I going to get drafted at all? What's going to go on? What's going to happen here? And early fourth round, I ended up getting drafted by the Ravens. And you know, a lot of people tell you uh, that it doesn't really matter what round you get drafted. It's a situation that you go to. And I ended up going to a great situation. And, you know, second year in the league, we ended up winning the Super Bowl. But it was a great situation for me there in Baltimore. It ended up working out really well. But at the time – you know, I was hoping to sneak in that third round. You make a little bit more money with that mm -hmm. signing bonus in the third round, and that's what I was looking at. A little like, more gumbo. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> a little more crawfish. Yeah. And uh, I, sl I slipped to the fourth round, and uh, but I ended up going to a great spot with the Ravens. And one of the coolest owners in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Steve Bashotti's the best. Man. But back then, it was Art Modell. Oh, It was yeah. Art Modell, and Steve Bashotti yeah. bought in um, for, for half of it right before the Super Bowl um, that year, uh, going into this, my second year in 2000. And um, and then he bought the rest of it a little bit later. But Steve Bashotti is the best. Um, I've meet, golfed yeah. with him, yep. uh, and he's he's just, he's he's a blast to hang out with. He's a great owner. It's a great organization. So I was I played four years there, my first four years, and then my last year in the NFL, I got a chance to go back there in 2013. I didn't do anything; just kind of hung out, ate the lap. food, ate the food, took hey, the victory lap. I and, got a ring uh, here, right? Yeah, and and so that was that was a wrap. But I, I it was it for me go, being able to kind of finish in Baltimore was special and uh, it's a great organization so you get drafted you go to baltimore you walk in you're this young kid you ain't the biggest dude in the world you walk into the locker room raven's locker room first day bam there's ray lewis give me the first thing yeah like the first I was memory of ray scared yeah scared that's scared. right it's not you know who, who you know who i was most scared of Tony Saragusa. Yeah, mm. the goose. He's the he's the goose. Probably, he seems the awesome. The goose. The like, goose. Well, let me tell you about the goose. Uh, he the, has the, mob yeah, ties, yeah. Well, but well. Probably. You know, you weren't in a locker room with the goose, right? True. Uh, I just watched him on TV. I was I was so scared of this guy, and he he's old school, right? Back then, you know, this is 1999, and he was I don't know what year he was in 1999. Uh, you know, he might have been his tenth year in the league. So he when he grew up and he was groomed, you had to earn your stripes, right? You had to you had you had to work your way to getting that respect from the guys. And going through the off season and everything and training camp, I hurt my shoulder the first day of training camp, dislocated it, and so I wasn't practicing. And I would walk out to practice. I was in a sling, and he would just be chirping. He would sit on the steps. You know, the big Sarah Goose is like, sit on the steps. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to walk by this guy. I got to actually walk by this guy. Yeah. And he would just start chirping me like, you're not going to make the team. What are you, You're already hurt? You're already hurt? Are you serious? You're already hurt? And I'm like, this guy, like, what can I say? I can't say anything, right? So I'd walk down to my coach, and I'd be standing there, and he would start going over there chirping my coach. Like, this guy got no chance to make the team. And I'm just like some little kid from southwestern Louisiana, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? I just want, I want to go back home. The NFL's not for me. <laughs> and I was, I was so scared of this guy. I'm keeping they, the money, but I'm right, going right, back. <laughs> right. I was so scared of this guy. They would sit outside of um, our facility there in training camp, and him and a couple other guys, they had paintball guns. They had paintball guns. Yes. And so you had to walk from the main building to the cafeteria. You had to walk outside. They start shooting you. Pop, 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 shooting you. And it was the scariest thing ever. I was so scared of this guy. But let me tell you, I'll, I'll tell you this. Once you made the team, I mean, he was the best guy ever. Mm -hmm. I love the guy now. I hated him then. But once you make the team, you're like, okay, now you're part of this crew. You made it. Good job. You went through the initiation. Yep. and uh, But it was so hard. I, I mean, I had moments there where I was just like, man, this is not for me. I want to go back home. Imagine that. That's like the golden days, you know, when you could actually do shit like that and right. you wouldn't get a lawsuit. Imagine that coming out right now like, oh, can't do veterans right. shooting the rookies with paintball guns. It would be, be like, all over it social lawsuit. media. It would be like, that's right. criminal. Yeah, and, and Brian Billick, he, he, he stood up in, the, in one of our team meetings like, no more paintball. <laughs> Y'all can't do it. And Saragusa was so loud at practice. It didn't matter if it was the head coach or whoever it was. He had no filter. He was always yelling. He was the loudest guy. But he ended up being the greatest guy. He, I, I love the guy now. But you know, Billick had to get up there and, and stand up there and say, hey, no more paintball guns. You're going to shoot someone's eye out. You, know, they, you just can't do it anymore. But back then, that's just the way they rolled. You know, you can't do that anymore, obviously, with social media and all the stuff that's going on. But it was a, it was a different world. And uh, but I, 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 you know, now looking back, I was glad that I went through it. It made me a little bit, you know, thicker skin. And and it's just that's just the way it was. That's where you learn to talk all your shit. Now. That's right. That's right. On the <laughs> that, golf that course. The, I use that on the exactly. golf course now. I, I see some goose <laughs> in you now. <laughs> well, you mentioned, I mean, you started, you, you didn't think start thinking about the NFL until your junior year. So you 
you know, you get started a little late, but who was the first guy you came across in the NFL? You're like, holy shit, I'm on the same field with this guy. Well, when I when I was practicing with Ray Lewis, mm -hmm. um, him, and then, you know, you're playing against Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith. I mean, uh, just just America's those guys. Team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> Don't I mean, bring up was, the Cowboys, yeah. bro. We, 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 I get excited. We do another Cowboys. hour on Dallas. For me, it was, you know, because I grew up a huge football fan, and now here I am, I'm playing on the same football field as these guys, and it's like, wow, I want to go ask them for an autograph. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I was like, these guys, I mean, I watched them on TV for years, and they've won Super Bowls, and it's Rod, I had Rod Woodson as my teammate. You know, the great That's Rod defense, Woodson. Yeah. I mean, it was just unbelievable to be on the same field with these guys because I was a huge football fan, and I was just kind of in awe. It took me a while to say, okay, I belong here. You know, to realize that, okay, you you know, you, you got a job to do. But it was, for me, being a football fan, so cool to just be out there and feel like, you know, I, shoot, I'm in the NFL. Yeah, but now i got to go to work. Right, i got to actually <laughs> do it. I, I want to stay in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How long do you feel comfortable? Like, you can walk in, and you can actually talk to some dudes and feel like I'm not the – you know, I'm it done took, paying my dues. Basically. It took me a while. You know, my whole first year, I was, um, you know, kind of just trying to find my way. Second year, you know, my second year started off bad. I mean, I had an awful training camp. I got lucky to make the football team. My man Trent Dilfer went to bat for me because I think they were going to cut me. I think they were going to cut me. And he went to Brian Billick and told Brian Billick, you know, that he wanted me on the team. So, Shout out to my Shout guy, Trent out. Dilfer. Um, and that's and, the year I won the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, that was the wow. year he won the Super Bowl. Dang. And I, Billick, Brian Billick, he called me. I do. I do. That's my guy. Yeah. Uh, I owe him Maybe a lot. some players down there <laughs> in Nashville. I owe him. Peyton a little bit more than him, but I owe both those guys <laughs> a lot. So, of, yeah. I, but, so Brian Billick called me in his office before the last preseason game going into my second year. I was having a bad training camp, and I was in a battle. I knew it. Like, you're in the room, and you know – like, you count numbers. Mm -hmm. right? Like, okay – that guy's making the team. That guy's making – that guy – okay, now you start looking. You, they're going to keep five or six receivers usually, and it's like, okay, it's probably me or that guy, you know, who's going to make the team and who's going to get cut. And I knew I was right on the bubble of making a football team or, or packing my bags and going back to southwest Louisiana eating crawfish <laughs> and – or probably fishing for crawfish uh, with my grandfather. And so – Brian Billett called me in, in his office before the last preseason game. We were playing the Giants, and he's like, hey, listen – you're going to make this football team. I was so nervous going up there to him. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what is he going to tell me? He's like, you're going to make this football team. I want you to go out there in this last preseason game. Just go out and have fun. Relax, have fun. Don't worry about it. You're making this football team. So I went out there, man, and it was the first first or second drive, and I got in the game, and boom, I was running like a 10-yard in route. I'm like, boom, perfect. Dropped it. Dropped it. First, I'm like, mm. what is – now I'm gonna, now I might get cut. You don't I might drop get cut. either. I might get cut. Yeah. And uh, but I ended up making the team, and I was inactive. You know, you got fifty-three guys on the roster; they only dress forty-seven for a game, which is the dumbest rule ever. Like, why? <laughs> why? Why do you have to make guys inactive? It's it's just dumb. Yeah, you're on the team, or you're not. Right? Just just dress out. You can play, or you can just not play. You you should be able to dress out. It's the dumbest rule ever. It's so outdated. Uh, hopefully, they get that fixed at some time. But so I was inactive for the first nine, ten games of the season, just in street clothes, watching the game on the sideline, and then. One of our receivers, uh, first-round pick out of Florida, Travis Taylor, broke his collarbone. So then I got an opportunity. I started dressing out. I was the fourth wide, and um, and I went from the fourth wide to the third wide, and and the next thing you know, a Super Bowl was there. And next thing you know, you're hauling in 38-yard tubbies. That's right. In yeah, the Super Bowl, I mean, you know, whatever. Right, just right, the first just, score yeah, of just, the game. That's it. That's Dilford it, drop right. it in. There. All you had to do was put your hand. He basically that's right. handed it to you. I know. Right? It, my job was easy. That was the one on Seahorn too. You ever feel? A little guilty getting rid of the unicorn. You basically ended the unicorn. Well, it was the last of a dying it breed. It was a little bro. bit of white on white crime there. Yeah, that was um, violent. And, you know, <laughs> it, it. We haven't seen a white cornerback since. I'm saying you. That Extinct. was an endangered species. You right. killed the last. I know. One. <laughs> <laughs> It was, uh, you know, hey, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. You know, whoever lined up on me Somebody's was going to get burnt. Go. Someone was going to get burnt. It was just, you know, unfortunate for him. It was him. One of us ain't making right, it. Right, bro. right. It's you <laughs> or me. It's hey, It's going to be you. Sorry, you got to go. Right. It's not going to be me. It's his business. That's right. It ain't personal. That's, no, it's just business. <laughs> Was yeah. there was there a guy? Because I mean, you know, like pitchers talk about it all the time, or batters talk about how they had a pitcher's number, a pitcher had a batter's number. Was there a cornerback that you just owned throughout your career? Um, just throw well, him out there right now. Mm -hmm. Well, there wasn't really one because I moved teams so much. You know, I, I spent four years with one team, and I kind of, I guess, I wore out my welcome, and they're like, "You got to go, yeah, you, you got to go." So then, you know, so I was four years in Baltimore, 
and then I was four years in Indy, and then I was three years in Denver, and then I was, you know, then I started hopping around late in my career, one year, one year, one year, uh, different spots. So I, I didn't play like one cornerback over and over again. You know, I started off, I was an outside receiver in Baltimore and, and, and played a little bit inside, and it was a different game there. And until I got to the Colts in 03, and then we kind of started doing the three wide thing and, and kind of made that, I guess, popular like it is now. A lot of teams did it before, but it wasn't the norm. So there wasn't one cornerback that I uh, went up against a, a ton because I kept bouncing around. I guess I kept wearing out my welcome, and people were like, yeah. I don't blame four, them. Four years, and, don't take and much I was, that, was, that was it. Four years, and that was it. Well, I mean, how long, have God we, bless how long have we had our relationship? Uh, too long. I'm about ready to what? pass you to somebody else. <laughs> trade is this going to be for it? For cash, whatever, it... for nothing. I'd take a six-round optional and <laughs> here, take his ass. Player to be named later? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, go back to that Super Bowl because you're a young kid. You're just coming out. You got the world's greatest defense behind you, but it's Super Bowl. What's that? Because we talked to golfers like sleeping on the lead going into a Sunday of a major, things like that. But that night before, do you do anything, sleep the, leading up to the game? What's you know, it I f- like? Yeah, it, I felt so good that week. We, we, we were in Baltimore, obviously, and then we went down. To, we were played in Tampa. And we got to warm weather, and we had a week of practice down there, and it was so nice, and my body felt great. And um, we had a great week of practice. I felt so prepared. So I was really calm. I wasn't nervous. I was just calm. I felt like I knew what was going on. And then when I lined up for that that play that ended up being the first touchdown of the game, I saw the defense. We had talked about it with my coach, Milt Jackson, the late Milt Jackson, and, and just so I knew exactly what to do. They were supposed to double both of the inside guys. So it wasn't all on Seahorn here. All right. Seahorn okay, yeah, Se- yeah. Se- yeah. Se- Se- was supposed to have help. Okay. So it's supposed to double Shannon Sharp. And double me. I don't know why they would double me. It was just a call, right? It was just a call. Yeah, that's right? a waste right, of a guy. Right, right, right. That's a waste <laughs> of a guy. Well, it turns out it wasn't yeah, a waste yeah. of the guy. So I ended up, you know, because because Dilfer came out, he looked left, and the guy that was supposed to be helping Seahorn went over on Shannon Sharp, and so they ended up having like three guys on Shannon Sharp. And but I just felt prepared, and, and and my receiver coach the whole time was like, "Hey, just beat you know when they do this because they've done it before where they double the inside guys, beat the guy, beat the one guy, beat that guy. Don't worry about the other guy. You beat that guy, and then let the quarterback if he throws it to you beat the other guy." So I knew what was going on, and Seahorn had an outside leverage, so I kind of set him up and kind of came off the ball and set him up up like I was going to go outside, and then just ran by him and. You know, obviously Dilfer made a great throw, and and the the one safety did mess up, so it wasn't all on Seahorn. Okay, good. Yeah, had that a little right. bit. There you, you go, the, the man. You took that's right. You ended a breed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can do. Don't trump on his grave. No, brave. no, no. It wasn't. It wasn't all on Seahorn. That's so cool, though. I mean, he mentioned how you were you were very very calm, but we've asked a lot of guys on here. Like yeah. Dan Marley wears a sock inside out, which he still does to this day. It shocks me. <laughs> da Derek Anderson did so much shit before a game; it was unreal. What'd you do superstition wise? You, nothing really. You know, Good, for I me, like that. nothing. I, I, mm. you know, I always wanted to get, I have high anxiety. You know, I, you know, constantly like thinking and had trouble sleeping the night before the game. Um, but, you know, normally I just like to get to the stadium earlier, get all my stuff situated. I don't like to be rushed. Just get my stuff situated, get on, get out to the field, catch some balls. You know, start thinking about the game. But there was nothing, you know, no pants had to do this or jersey this or wear this. There, there was really nothing for me. It was, you know, to me that's a little bit overrated. I just think, you know, you just felt good getting getting my playbook a little bit before the game, start, make sure that I, you know, know all the new plays that are going in, those types of things. But there was nothing really for me that I had to do, you know, every game to make myself feel good. How have you not taught him any of this yet? Uh, so you're a rare dude in any yeah, I mean, you, sport. You, you that show later, up early. I, that you I didn't have really. one thing like, oh, I like Titleist fours and not twos. Or uh, well, I just well. meant he said he liked to show up early and then feel rushed. Just right. oh, yeah, I like to get there last minute. The more pressure, and then um, once you well, get out there, it becomes calm. Uh, well, that was I was wondering because I kept on calling. You wondering when we're gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna come pick me up, and uh, you know, like, nothing, well, nothing, nothing. Yeah, yeah you I mean, had to get all gussied up, bro. Well, I you know, the Ellen show. Well, podcast dog. Well, for me, it is. You know, this is big. This is this is the big leagues for me. You know, I wanted to take it. Be a professional for you. It's a y'all. big moment for you. It is. And you're it handling is, it well. It's a highlight, you know, one of the highlights. about halfway through. Oh, True. Still <laughs> I still got time to screw yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. you could. <laughs> one thing I've always thought was really cool in the NFL is like you hear about, you know, quarterbacks and running backs buying their offensive linemen gifts and everything. You're yeah. a receiver. Mm hmm. Do receivers, do they buy anyone gifts or do they receive no, any receive. gifts? No, Look at the no, name. Yeah, no, I'm not buying they anyone receive. a gift. Who am I going to buy a gift? <laughs> Peyton Manning a gift? I'm going to buy, what am I going to buy Peyton? You know, that's like, the question. Did no. he buy you anything for catching he all did. the balls? He did. He did. Um, he, 
Peyton bought us a real nice gift in 2004. Um, you know, Peyton, he'll reward you if you play well. You know, he's not going to reward you if you go out there, you're not playing well, right? So Peyton would take care of his linemen, you know, those guys always with different things. And and uh, he bought us a great gift in 2004. We were the first receivers, me, Marvin, and uh, Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, to, to catch um, – uh, go over a thousand yards and ten touchdowns, and it still stands today. No, no three receivers have ever done it. And he bought us some nice watches, really nice watches, engraved on the back with the, with the with the stats and stuff. So uh, that was really nice of him. That was really the only, um, I guess, the only gift that I've ever gotten. Probably I, I didn't deserve any more. But I mean, Dilfer, was, kept, Dilfer kept true. you on the team, right? Right, Dilfer, exactly. Yeah, Dilfer exactly. Gets you a job, <laughs> exactly. Nice. You know, and I think now with the guys making so much money. You know, especially like linemen. Back in the day, that used to be the thing because the linemen didn't make a lot of money. Yeah. Quarterbacks made, you know, a ton of money. They would give the linemen gifts for Christmas. But the linemen, you look at left tackles oh. making seventeen, eighteen million dollars a year, sixty, seventy million guaranteed. I mean, quarterbacks going to buy that guy gifts? Like, why would you need to buy that guy a gift? He's he's good. Patrick Mahomes could buy Amazon for the whole line. He, he, yeah, he, he could take care of those guys. But those guys now are making so much money. It's just like all of it, um, coaching, everything. Right. It, everything's going up. up. It's it's you know you really, and you see running backs taking care of their offensive line. But unless it's a rookie, you know a lot of these guys are making so much money. It's it's kind of outdated to me. What are you going to do for them? Yeah, they can't. I mean, it's nice. It's a nice gesture. Yeah, though, it is a nice like gesture, that. and it was. I got that watch. It's a. It's a really nice watch. You should be wearing that thing. I should have. I should have. You, you and Peyton, both Louisiana guys. That's right. About the same age. Did you know yeah. before you went to Indianapolis from Baltimore? Were you all buddies before yeah. you have? Were you friends? Yeah. Because now you're like best friends. Yeah, uh, we were. I, I met Peyton. My uh, early in my college career, they had the the Manning Passing Academy, and it was you know New Orleans area, and they would have co college counselors go. You go there, and you 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 know you work with the, with the with the kids that would go there, and uh, the high school, middle school kids, and um, so I went one year, and that's when I I first met Peyton. So it was early in my college uh, career was when I first met him. So I'd go every single year. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. You get to meet – you know, Peyton was the best high school recruit. The guy. Right. It was so cool. And then Archie Manning was there. It's like Archie Manning, and he's the greatest guy ever. Archie's the best. He still is the best. He's awesome. And you get to – like Archie Manning and Peyton Manning. It was so cool to be there. So we developed a friendship then. And then, you know, obviously he went on got drafted by the Colts. I got drafted by the Ravens and – um I don't know if he put in a good word for me when I became a free agent with the Ravens. You know, I, I tore my foot up my last year there, had Liz Frank surgery, and I was looking for, you know, I was a free agent looking for a spot and took a visit to a few teams, went to the Colts, went to the Rams, went to the Panthers, and, um, you know, ended up signing with the Colts. You know, I mean, you mentioned Peyton, obviously having a great friendship with him, but, like, what makes him so different than everybody else? I mean – we're golfers, but we can still see. Like, I mean, he runs the show out there yeah. when, he, when he was playing. I mean, you, it seemed like he was the offensive coordinator and the quarterback. He was. But what made him so much different than all the others? How he prepared, how he worked, you know, every single day. I was around that guy four years in Indy, one year with the Ravens. And you're talking about the off season, season. It, it, it gets to be a grind. Mm -hmm. uh, I never saw that guy go to work one day and not have an attitude of, I'm getting better today. And, you know, I think that speaks volumes and just the way that he works, the way that he prepares. And you know that you can look at him and say, that guy, you know, he might not play the best game, but he's ready to go. He's prepared. He takes it so seriously. And it's hard not to raise your level up because sometimes you're out there, you know, you don't want to – I mean, Drew, you never practice that much in golf, right? Just talent. Right. Just, right. just, just lean yeah, on the yeah, talent. Yeah. Right, exactly. Uh, but, you know, you're out there practicing and grinding. And you're just like, God, I don't want to go out there, you know. But you had no choice when, it was, when you were – playing with that guy because you looked at him you saw how he worked and what it meant to him and if you didn't go out there and do it it didn't matter if you were his best buddy or who you were he's like you knew that he was going to get you replaced he got me replaced during a game one time mm. and he tries to deny it to this That's day tough on a friendship i know i know he's lucky i'm still friends with him <laughs> we were playing the houston texans in houston it wasn't even my fault of course not no i knew it wouldn't be right yeah. we were playing the texans in houston and I was having a great game. 
first half, Stanley. I might have, I might have stand, right. Yeah. I might have had five or six catches in the first half, playing well. And you know, back then Peyton would always do all these things and kick his foot up, and sometimes he would motion you in all these things. So I was outside of I think it was Marvin or Reggie, and I was supposed to motion into his hip, and then we twist release. I go down the middle of the field, and the other guy goes outside, and so he told me to motion in. And so I start motioning, and then he didn't want me to. So he starts doing all this other stuff, changing the protections and all these other things. And, and he hikes the ball, and I take down the middle of the field. They blew the coverage. I was wide open. And somehow he screwed up because he, he messed the protection. He messed <laughs> I was the protection. He, he, he messed the protection up. Right, he messed the protection up. I mean, he should have known that they were blitzing off the left side, and so they the guy came free. So he had to he had to roll out of the pocket, right? And you know, he's not very he, at that time. He wasn't he, early in his career; he could run, but he wasn't very athletic. So he just and he had to throw it away. So he was pissed, and so somehow I get blamed for it. I'm like, how am I blamed for it? Because I motioned too early? Like, well, that's not my fault. That guy, you know, wasn't protected. You should have saw that guy blitzing. You should have changed the protection. You always do that. Next thing you know, they put me on the bench. I'm not playing. I'm like, so I was so pissed. And I still talk to him. He denies it to this day. And so I was pissed. And I said, so I'm sitting on the sideline now. And I'm, I was playing well. And so I'm sitting on the sideline. I'm like, okay, all right, that's how it's going to be. And so the, my replacement, Troy Walters, great guy, great guy, uh, NFL coach right now. He coaches for Cincy, uh, receiver coach, great guy. And he replaced me. So he's on there. So I'm sitting on the sideline. I'm like, you got to be kidding me right now. He just benched me for – I didn't do anything wrong. And so so Peyton started doing all these audible and, and checking and, and stuff, and, and poor Troy is out there, and, and Troy starts blocking, and it's a pass play. And Peyton yes. goes to throw the football, and he's like, so he, he has to throw it away. And now he's pissed off at Troy. So he gets Troy benched, and now I'm back in the lineup. I'm back in the lineup. So on the plane ride home, me and Peyton always sat by each other. And I'm like, bro, what happened? Like, you really benched me? And he's like, what are you talking about? So he, 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 he acted like he didn't know it, he, he, and he still denies it to this day. I'm like, you benched me for no reason. That was your fault. So that's the story of Peyton benching me. Damn, Peyton. I know. He had it like that, though. He could be like, Stokely messed up, he's out. I mean, it's he's Peyton Manning. Coach. It's Peyton Manning. He, look, coordinator with him Peyton ran there. everything, you know, it, he, when, when you talk about meetings. And, you know, when he said something, I mean, it was – it was law. Like, so, so, like, when he told you, and that's what made him so great. It was the attention to detail, too. You know, you ask attention to detail. And that's, for me, you know, I had played 15 years in the NFL, and I didn't know what I was doing early in my career. I just tried to grind that out and make a few plays. But when I got to Indianapolis, the attention to detail that he taught me is like, hey, when I want you at 12 yards, your ass better be at 12 yards. And you better be right there. That's what I expect from you, right? And so – I was able to take what I learned from him, just the attention to detail and the discipline of route running to, to Denver. And the coaches appreciated that so much. The quarterback appreciated that, that, you know what, you're going to be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. Quarterbacks trusted that. The offensive coordinators trusted that. And that's why I was able to play so long. You know, I played, you know, 15 years. I was like 37 years old my last year because they appreciated that, you know, you're going to do your job and you're going to be where you're supposed to be. But I learned that from Peyton. That's cool. That's a long time for a slot guy. He, you did do him one solid, or he did you a solid, I should say. You caught the pass that broke the uh, single-season record, Dan Marino, touchdown passes in a season. Be honest with me on this handshake parking lot deal before that. Like, hey, when you get one away and it's the breaking one, like it's going to me. Well, Draw it up for me. Well, True I, or not? Well, I, I'm, I'm kind of impressed that you did some homework and that you know that. Hey, come on. First off. This ain't right, rookie right, league. Right, this ain't right. Stoke or That's whatever. impressive, yeah, man. On, Look at yeah. you all growing up <laughs> doing some homework here. Yeah, that was, you know, back then it was like that was a record that was never going to be broken. Dan Marino's 48 touchdown passes in a single year. And we started rolling there in 2004, and we got to a, a certain point, and that was all that people were talking about was, y'all going to break the record. And then we started, ta- you know, everybody's like, who's going to catch it? Who's yeah, going to catch it? Who's going to catch this ball? And um, I threw him a hundred, and I said, "Hey, make sure this play goes <laughs> to me." Hundred moves I threw, him, I, threw him, I threw him a hundo. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, don't bitch yeah, me right, on that right, drive. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, it was a great play, and he kind of, um, you know, it was a kind of draw it in the dirt type of play. And in the NFL, like if you give a signal like this, it's a smash. It's just like universal signal, smash, smash. So the inside guy runs a corner route. The outside guy runs a six-yard hitch. I mean, that's what it is. Everybody knows it. That's a universal signal. So he, I was, we kind of 
you know, muddle, muddy huddle. You know, we didn't really huddle. Muddy huddle. Yeah, we didn't yeah. really huddle. Uh, you, I, I would go back and I would get to play and I would tell the outside receiver. So we didn't really huddle, huddle. And so I went over there. He's like, hey, I'm going to give you a smash. Run, 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 the, run the corner post. So I'm like, okay. So I told the outside guy, I'm like, hey, smash, smash. And so we lined up, lined up. And, he, of course, he, he looked and he starts and he goes, hey, smash, smash. And he's selling. And so I looked at the outside guy. I'm like, smash, smash. And so, of course, they all see it, the defense. And the def- defensive guys aren't the smartest guys, right? <laughs> it's, 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 they're not the smartest guys. So, so, sure enough, I got around the guy over there playing quarters cover. The guy over me, I just had to get around him. And I leaned to the corner. And the safety was like, I'm going to pick it. I'm going to pick Peyton. And he went. And I just went. And Peyton threw a perfect pass. Right when I turned around, it was like I couldn't even drop it. It was like right on me, perfect pass. So, there it was. And then, so I, I, I pretty much, I catch, I, I keep all my footballs. All of them, all my catches, all my touchdowns. All 12? All my catches. All my, all my, all my, all my touchdowns. You got 12 yeah. footballs out of yeah. them? <laughs> 30, 39 if I think I look pro. Uh, okay. yeah. See, yeah. Hey, look at you, 39. This is a pro. This I was a hoping leagues. to get to 40, and I didn't catch one my last year uh, in Baltimore. I was hoping to get to 40. Uh, We're like Peyton with our prep. Bro. That's right. I know. I know. Yeah. He's. Yeah, we'll see who's better. Okay. Uh, but um, but that one, so so I caught it, and that, you know a lot of attention on that one at yeah. the time. And so I'm like, I'm not letting go of this football. <laughs> but at the time of the game, there was only a couple minutes left in the game. We that's that touchdown we were playing the Chargers. That touchdown put us down two points. So now we had to go for two oh. to tie it. Bring in another ball to tie it. So the two point conversion, I wasn't on the field. Like I don't, I don't know why. Uh, I thought really so stupid. too. But we ended up <laughs> making the two point conversion. And so I'm like, okay, crap. Now, now what do I do? I, I got the ball in my hands. Like we missed it. I think there was like 40 seconds left. If we miss the two point conversion, game's over. We're gonna kick an onside kick. Probably not gonna get it. Game's over. I'm gonna take my ball. I'm not even gonna shower. I'm gone. I'm going to the house to the <laughs> yeah, crib, to right? The crib, right. Yeah. Hey, wife, I'll meet you. I'll meet you at the house. I got a right? million dollars right. in my right. hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna give it to yeah. a fan like Mike Evans did. <laughs> yeah. um, so I. Um, so now we made the two point conversion. Of course, we kick it deep. They don't go anywhere with the football. Now we're going to overtime. So I give the football to a fellow receiver, Aaron Moorhead. He wasn't dressed out, right? So he, he was inactive. So I'm like, here, hold this football. You don't give it to anyone, okay? You, you don't give this football to anyone. But now we, we're going to overtime, right? So I got to get ready to play football. I'm back, back playing football. So, you know, I don't know who had the football first, but I got to go back in the game. And, and so, so Aaron Moorhead keeps coming up to me. He's like, hey, the, the equipment managers want the football. I'm like, no, 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 don't give that football to him. No, absolutely not. Don't give it to him. And, and, and so he keeps coming up to me. And so finally I was like, shit. I was like, listen, okay, I got a football game to play. Yeah. Just give it to him. I can't deal with this anymore. Give it to him. That's fine. So we ended up winning the football game. He gave the football to the equipment managers. That's Gone. the end of it. Gone. End of game. Yeah. Game over. Could have held that thing ransom for Game God over. knows. You could have got some Game Bitcoin, over. some it, it, season tickets. Yeah, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Can I get Gronk, some Bitcoin? Gronk right. Coin. right, right. <laughs> something. <laughs> something. I, I wish I would have just gave it to a fan. Yeah. I don't know where the football went. I think Mr. Ursay got his hands on it. And I love Mr. Ursay. Great owner again. A great organization. Um, I think he's got it somewhere or something. I don't know what happened to it. Um, but it's uh I don't. I know. I don't have it anymore. And the, the record's been broken twice. I think Brady broke it, and then Peyton broke it again in 2013. So it's like third place but now. But still, it's still a nice thing. To ha- At the time, it would have commanded a nice figure. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Um, Are you trying to make me feel all worse about this? Receivers talking about was were Marvin and Reggie pissed that you got it? No. Because no. the smash, like you, you knew it. He said, "Hey, I'm going to call this, but run the other." Even right. the outside wideout didn't know it, right? Like no, you were the only guy that knew it. So I was the only person he was that like, knew this it. This is going to work, and my right. boy's going to catch the tub. Yeah, you know, I mean, but at the time, you're just trying to dial up a play that's going to because we're down eight points. We're yeah. trying to we're trying to tie the football game. It wasn't like it was a freebie. You know, when yeah. we played when we played some teams that that year, we played the Lions, and Peyton I think threw for six touchdowns in Thanksgiving Day or something like that. Like you get to the you get to the third fourth quarter, he can pick who he wants to throw it to. We're going to score, right? We're going to score touch. He can kind of, and and I had a few touchdowns that game. I'm like, let's go. I want I want some more here, right? I want some more. And he can kind of pick and choose because when you're running like that and you're running hot, it's really up to the quarterback to decide, especially in that type type of offense. Like, all right, but Peyton was so good that he knew he knew he's like, okay, Reggie hasn't had a few this game. You know, especially late in the game, he's like, I'm going to start feeding Reggie. So he knew those guys. Like me, me, I was a third wide. Like I knew my role. 
like my role, like I, I knew certain games I wasn't going to have a lot of catches. I was fine with it. But, but you know, like those guys, you know, those guys, you know, they were expecting a lot of balls coming their way, which, you know, they were, you know, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, Marvin's in the Hall of Fame. Reggie's going to be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, for me, it was just like, okay, if I get my opportunities, that's great. Those guys, though, you know, they could be a little moody sometimes. You're all divas. Get, all you wild, uh, bro. You never well, get hold enough. on. Let's just get into this moody well, part real quick because I was looking back at some of the highlights. Oh. And uh, you might have gave a little smash smash to a referee. Ooh. Well, yeah, there yeah. I might, yeah. I might yeah. be one Look, short uh, on Eli now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that's all right. I just, well. Don't matter. I just want to hear. It. We don't do a lot of pregame meetings. <laughs> well. We prep, but it's independent prep. <laughs> I did. It was uh, 2009, and we uh, it was Josh McDaniels uh, first year with the Broncos, and um, we had started off six and zero. Oh. And then we started sputtering and we started struggling and we were going to Philly to play Philly. And, um, we were struggling early in the football game. And I don't know how many games we had lost. I think at that point we might've been like six and six after starting six and oh, we ended up, we ended up, I think finishing seven and nine that season after starting six and oh, which is hard to do. I remember it. You yeah. remember? Yeah. Hard, hard to do. Kyle. So, yeah. Blame Kyle. Yeah, blame Kyle Orton. Got uh, <laughs> you got to blame Orton. Come on, for Kyle. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> it was his fault. Yeah. So, and he's, it was his fault that I got kicked out because he threw a bad pass. So, it was like we had went like three and out two or three times in a row. And so, we had a third down, and it was, you know, first quarter or second quarter. Um, first. First quarter, yeah. first quarter. Yeah. So, I think, so, I think, of, yeah. so I think we, we probably went three and out two times in a row. And, and, and so we had a short third down, and I was running a, a drag route from the right side to the left side. And Orton threw it out there, and I got beat my guy, and he kind of jerked me real quick. And, so, and I, so I couldn't catch it, and I'm like, there's got to be a flag. Where's the flag? The guy jerked me back. I mean, where, where's the flag? And so I was pissed. I was pissed. You know, I could run hot, and and I didn't like the re- I didn't really like referees um, a lot uh, <laughs> back then. I still don't. Uh, and so I'm like, I'm looking for the first referee I could find. I'm like, where is the flag? You got to throw a flag right here. So I'm pissed already because we're not playing well. We're going three and out now, probably three times in a row. And so I'm looking, and I see a ref like down all the yards 40 yards <laughs> away bro <laughs> and now y'all are exaggerating it's like tw- it was like 25 Dude, it was no. like 25 so i wanted to give him a piece of my mind like, like where's he going like, like right. i thought you were running right. to the tunnel bro i thought he's i'm out i wanted to give this guy a piece of my mind like dude like no how how did you not throw a flag here so i ran over there and i you know i told him i'm like um i'm like i'm like hey uh, well, I was like, I was, was this like, what you said? No, I, so, so I looked at, him, so I looked, me, I looked at him like this. I'm like, hey, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I was like, that's bullshit. And so as I said it, I was like, that's bullshit. As and I swung my hand like this because I was pissed. And he, at the same time that I did this, he put his hand out like this, and I grazed his finger, and hey. I. He's like pointing to the offense. It was yeah, like he was just, sportsman like yeah. offense. And as no, hand went out. no, no, he wasn't calling the flag or anything. He wasn't yeah. throwing a flag. Yeah. So I think he, he was telling you to get your ass to the Yeah, bench. yeah, he was just oh, like this. He was ass. just kind of like, go, yeah. you know, whatever, because I was giving him, and I was like, that's, you know, and I did my hand like this, like, that's bullshit. And uh, he put his hand out, and I grazed his finger. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I just hit the rest finger. I'm out. Hopefully, I was like, hopefully they let it slide. Like, I just grazed it. Maybe he didn't feel it. Maybe his fingers are numb because it might be a little cold. Adrenaline. And, right, and maybe he – maybe he'll let that pass, right? And so – I was on the sideline. I'm looking up there, and I'm looking up at the at the scoreboard at the referee because they threw a flag on me, right? Mm-hmm. They threw a flag, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen? And the referee was like, you know, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 14, Denver Broncos, he's been ejected. And I'm like – To gotta, be fair, Jim Nance was shocked. I just got just ejected. Yeah, yeah, I Jim know. It was if Nance Jim and Sims. If Jim disagrees, then it's yeah. bullshit. Right. He's God. I mean, uh, he is the – right. He is the mm-hmm. man. Right. So uh, it, it was – and so I'm like, I'm ejected. And I was, I, was, I was sitting next to Art, and I was like, I was standing next to Art, and I was like, I think I got injected. I think I'm going to get injected. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. you're gone. Yep. You're gone. And so I start walking. You know, I'm, I'm ejected from a football like football game. I got ejected. I'm like, what, what do I do now? And so they're like, you know, they start walking you off, and they got cops around you or whatever, and you're walking through the tunnel, and they got the camera on you, and it's embarrassing. And so I just sit in the locker room for the whole rest of the three quarters, and – it's just like, what do you do? You just watch the game. We lost, and it was – I mean, so I had to call home, 
That, that was the worst part. I had two young kids. I had to call home, so I called my wife, and she was pissed. <laughs> She was pissed. Lana, yeah, she, she was didn't pissed. Like that? Yeah, Lana didn't like that. Uh, she don't fuck around. No, no, no. She runs hot, yes. and uh, you know, Lana Jimenez, right? That's so she runs hot, right. right? And so my kids were crying because they thought I was getting arrested and bring it, uh, being being brought to jail because the cops were behind <laughs> oh, me, that's right? Great. So my kids thought I was going to jail, and um, it, it was not a good night for me. I tell you that I got kicked out of the game. I get fined. Um, and uh, it was it was embarrassing, but you know now I look back and it's kind of funny. I mean, how many people can it's say a shit call? Right? How, yeah, and it, it was, was Kyle's fault. You said it was Kyle's. Right? He threw a bad ball. Kyle if he threw, and if, he, if, if he threw a ball, you know, if he threw a catchable ball, I wouldn't have to reach out. I wouldn't have got pulled back. We had a first down and. Uh, so Kyle screwed me, uh, Peyton screwed me, and yeah. my wife was pissed, and my kids thought I got arrested. There you go. You can't catch right. a break. You can't, can't, can't catch a break. I can't. Is that your only ejection ever? That's it. In that was EV? it. I probably could have had a few You're more. You're a class individual. You're right. You know? Just one. Yeah. Just one. One time. I've done it all. I've done it all. I've won a couple Super Bowls. I got ejected from a football game. You Touched know? all the bases. Augusta That's Nationals right. many a time. That's right. He's That's riding right. all the rides. Dude. That's it. That's it, man. No complaints from me. That's, That's a, it. That's a kid. <laughs> Um, you want to go to E nine? Well, I we I, I wanted a little golf thing because so obviously we talked going. about. I want to just keep, yeah. He's just starting to get the drink down. The Cajuns coming yeah, out. I'm it's ready. Getting good. I'm ready. But you, you played Augusta obviously several times. I'm guessing with uh-huh. Peyton. Yep. Where where I else? think every time has been with uh, Peyton. So he's kind of like um, his dad. Just send you a guest yeah. fee. Um, <laughs> Peyton usually takes care of That's everything. Nice, huh? yeah, 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 yeah. He he takes care of everything. And so a, I got and a, a watch. Uh huh. And a watch, right? So there's no complaints for being a friend that of, house of Peyton Manning. Yeah. The house, right? <laughs> yeah. Look, I know where the bread is buttered. Like I told y'all, look, if it wasn't for Peyton, I probably you know I played 15 years. If it wasn't for Peyton, I probably would have played eight years. You know, um, and and certainly my best year in, in 2004 when we where we had that great year. I mean that helped me go on and do better things. So if it wasn't, if it wasn't for me going to Indianapolis and playing with the Colts and playing with Peyton, I mean, I don't know what my career would have been like. Smart dude. You know, right. you know what the, you know who the latch is. Hey, on listen, too? listen, Shit. listen. Everybody's right. doing it to somebody. Mm-hmm. That's right. I mean, you know where your bread's buttered. And like when Peyton told you something, you, you did it. And that that's what I told um, Eric Decker and Demarius Thomas in 2012. When I came back to Denver, Peyton went there, he signed there. I don't know how they – wanted to re-sign me there, but they did. And I told those two young guys, I'm like, listen, whatever he tells you, it's going to be the hardest year of your life as far as work because they hadn't been around it. They hadn't been around it. You know, they're around just different offenses and stuff. I'm like, he's going to be demanding and it's going to be hard, but just do it because I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. Just do it. And those guys went on. They did it, and they were great. But it's just playing with that guy. He just makes you, you know, better than what you are. And he just – but there's a – there's a, you know, he just demands excellence, demands accountability. And if you do it, you know, it, it's rewarding. No doubt. I had an evening with Demarius Thomas in Vegas. One yeah? Time. Myself, oh, yeah. Jason Duffner, and Demarius <sighs> Thomas went out one night. Really? DT. I had a gold blast. Flipping a few. Yeah. You Flipped know? some cards with him, and then we ended up uh, at the nightclub uh, uh, together. Uh, it was blast. DT's People the didn't best. People didn't know who was, was who. Right. They come up and go back. Demarius, <laughs> I love you, dog. Dude, it was so much fun. Though. I never met him. My casino host was like, do you know Demarius Thomas? I was like, nope, I know who he is. And we went over, introduced, started having some cocktails. Uh-huh. Spent... God, good, he's a oh, unit, huh? Oh yeah, he he was physical beast. so. I have the picture. I'll show you. You'll big, die. You won't be big and fast and physical, and the way that he could run routes, he was uh, so special and hard worker, dedicated, and you know he's that's why him and Peyton are still really really close and just love the guy. He's just he was he was great. When are, when are you going to be on the Monday Night Football? Oh. Well, that's what I keep wondering, Colt. You know, I just keep that's like questioning, sting a bit. like you know. Uh, and Peyton's asked me a few times. He's <laughs> asked me, but I've work. just been busy. Yeah. I've been a little bit it's the busy. Same with this podcast, with, you've right. been asking, I'm, right. I'm like we got do we got a pro- yeah. we got a yeah. pecking order, right? But with Peyton. You know, he has actually asked me a few times, you know, but I've, I've been busy. So he's, I think he's going to like Mickelson and yeah, Brady Nance and, and, Nance, and yeah, Kevin, yeah. Those PTA Kevin Hart. I mean, it's yeah, just like, you know, so I've been a little bit busy because, you know, I got kids and stuff. I get and, it. Home life takes over a little bit, so uh, I'll, I'll try to find some time for him. Maybe I don't know if it'll be this year, maybe next year, uh, but I don't know. I don't know when that time will come. I, keep I enjoy those like, Monday uh, nights. They're great. they're good. They're really yeah. good. He does a good job. I like watching it because for me, even though you know, I feel like that's the one thing that I know is football. 
and you know that's I know football. I can watch football. I can see it. I can be able to talk about it and see what's going on. But when you hear Peyton and Eli talk about plays and how it's supposed to look and different things, I think that's that's great. You know, that's what I, I love to see. And I, I'm sure the normal fan loves watching that and mm-hmm. just seeing their breakdown of the game and what they're talking about and what they're thinking about. And uh, But I, I love watching it. Let's I don't pour. think it can be duplicated either. I think those yeah. two, like Peyton makes that thing work. Eli's great on it too. I, like other sports will try it, and I don't know that it'll hit like like this. They they see the blueprint now, and they're like, oh, let's do that. I don't know that it'll hit like that. I thought you would be good at golf. One, I you think me and so. Cole will be terrific. Yeah, at I thought we, so. We'll get you on ours. We get yeah, you on the, really yeah, on the subpar cast. Yeah, you yeah. come in there and drop some knowledge. I, I, what I, I would do here is slice it into the ocean <laughs> and pebble seven times in a row. <laughs> I'm laying eight now, okay, you drop but I got a key. stroke here. I might be able to make a ten you for a gotta nine. Grind out the nine, always. <laughs> always. There's no quit. You know, you always got to grind that out. Quit. You never know. You are. Hard. You never know what your opponent's gonna do. That's my mindset. Where's Arch Manning going to school? Oh, that's you a know. good one. You probably know. That's a good one. Uh, you know, I was around him this summer a little bit, and he's he's a special young man. Um, he's he's built. He works hard. Um, and you just watch him work and throw the football. It's, I mean, he's 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 great, and he's a. I, I don't. I mean, obviously, I don't know where he's going to go. Just say it. We uh. need to break some, make some headlines here. Still, <laughs> we try to break, breaking news. We try to break other sports news. Though, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Well, to, I wish I knew. I don't know. If it's Ole uh, Miss, give me a blank. Right. <laughs> yeah. LSU. Where are we at? <laughs> give me some. Who knows? I. I. I well, wherever he goes, he'll be great. He's. Uh, he's LeBron. He's. He's. He's, a, he's just. A, he's. He's great. I mean, he really is, and he's got a great head on his shoulders. That's the thing is when you talk to him, you know, you would never know. And I mean, I've known the. A kid since you know he's been probably elementary school uh middle school you know and and so but you see where he's at now and you see him work and how he throws the football and um he, he's just great he's great he, I mean, he, he kind of checks all the boxes amazing, just, just yeah. being humble and just with every all the tension you know you, you look at it now of course you're manning and you're your archie's grandson your peyton's you know nephew and cooper's son and um just the attention that he's gotten and how he just got a great head on his shoulders and he's so humble and how he works that's kind of like what they do they, you know, that's just how they all are they just work and they're very humble i mean it it's is, pretty impressive you just since you brought arch up it reminded me of this i was with cooper in new orleans this year and it's just crazy how royalty they are down there we go from dinner to another spot with Cooper, we get out and the valet people are asking to take pictures with Cooper. I'm like, y'all know this is Eli Payton, right? Like this is Cooper. Like it's one of them. Right. Cooper. I'm well, like, Cooper's the the funniest of oh, them all. Oh, he is right? the best. He, he he is the funniest. They should of bring them all. him that... on the cast. He's coming. Oh. He's coming on ours. Oh, he's coming on ours. Oh, we're gonna get oh, him wow. before his brother. Wow. Let's get wow. him. That's, yeah, no. If, if you, you throw know. Cooper in the mix, yeah, yeah. Cooper's Cooper's the. He's uh, he's great. I mean, all of them are great. They're just they're just really good people. You know, I think that's that's. You know, first and foremost, they're just good dudes, um, and um, obviously very talented family. But they they all just work hard, and they got a great mindset. And to me, it comes from Archie. Mm-hmm. You know, Arch Archie. I mean, he's just he's the man, and and the way that like he operates, and the way that he's always been, and uh, you know, when I saw him and when I was in college, I'm like, this is Archie Manning. God, and he was just so down to earth and such a good guy. You know, we would go out. As counselors, like we would hit the town, you know, at night. I mean, it was nightlife back then. There was no social media. I mean, we would hit the small town and and just go after it. And he was like, "Hey, listen, I get it. Y'all gonna go out. Y'all gonna have a good time. But y'all gotta be. The one thing I ask for y'all, y'all gonna be here for the six o'clock coaches meeting. You know, that's it. Whatever y'all do, y'all do. And um, you know, we always were there. But you know, he just he knew he he got it, and he's just he's just. He's the best. They're Hello. special. We're yeah. waiting to see you on that Manning cast. I'll be there. I'll be there. Might be 20, 24, or 5, but eventually, hopefully, once you, they get down the if list, you find I'll out be where there. Arch is going, we'll have you back on the show. Okay. That's right. That'll be break round it two. Before he breaks it. Yeah. That'll be round two. Well, I keep, you know, Peyton knows, you know, I do radio now, and I'm like, give me, you know, you got to give me some nuggets. Yeah, like, dude. give me some good stuff. And every now and then, he'll feed me some good stuff. So maybe I'll get the. The arch man, feed that on down the trickle down. Right, What's the right. point yeah, of it? All? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll let you know. Okay, course. yeah, yeah get yeah. to me on that. Yeah, yeah I'll, get, I'll, I'll definitely <laughs> give you that one, Drew. All right, well, let's uh, get to the emergency nine. We could do this for five hours, but I would love I it. I think we all got <laughs> some stuff to do later on this evening, including the Cowboys. Yeah. By the way, what's Stokes all what, dressed, what, what, what do we Stokes got? Stokes all dressed up. He's all gussied up for the ball. 
Yeah, we, we got, got a big I think supper. We got a big supper. We got this. dinner after this, big right? You're supper. buying? Yeah, I'll be right there. Oh, You're buying, right? Roulette, huh? maybe slide it roulette? in. Roulette? Let's see how it I'm shakes out. I mean, I got so much of Drew's money. I got Drew so much of Drew's money in my oh pocket. Oh, my God, bro. From gin. Don't say from gin. In between. Um, what, what's the other game maybe. that we play? What's the other game? Golf? That, yeah. No, no not golf. Not golf. But the other one that we play when we go around the table, Canadian. Canadian blackjack. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 You've never it's been not even from gym. America. <laughs> all right, Colt, start the E9 before okay, this E9. Newest. Let's go. Start <laughs> making wow. up more wow. shit. <laughs> all right, we asked this to everyone. Okay. <laughs> I might know the answer. You can you can trade lives with anyone for a day, dead or alive. Who would it be? I, I, Muhammad Ali. Interesting. You got the gloves. Yeah. yeah I was big Muhammad Ali. I got into collecting Muhammad Ali like when I got to Denver in 2007. I was bored. I was bored and I loved collecting. I was always a baseball card guy and I, I loved autographs and collecting. And I was like, what do I want to do? I'm kind of bored. And so I started collecting Muhammad Ali stuff and his tickets and his uh, and his cards. And so I became a big collector of him and I just sold all my cards. I still have my ticket collection, but I, I love Muhammad Ali. I think he's got a great story and um, he's just kind of one of those guys that you look at and like in his era, he was just the best and he still kind of resonates um, as being just the GOAT. Like that's the GOAT. Like you can say Brady, Manning, or whoever, you know, Jordan. But when you say the GOAT, it's, it's Muhammad Ali, really. Interesting. I thought you said Cooper Cup. <laughs> I love Cooper Cup now. You want to be hey, good in the spot? Hey, you watch Cooper Cup, man. That I guy, love him, that bro. guy is so much fun to watch. You know Edelman and Wes Walker and 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 those guys. But Cooper Cup hey. right now, he's taking it to a whole nother level. They all might owe you a piece of those big. Well, that's what you I'm are, saying. You, Where's the royalty at, yeah, fellas? Where's the royalty slot, at? Right, the slot machine right. I mean, it wouldn't be where specs. it's at, right? I mean, you don't that's kind of. Me. But you know, Wayne Corbett. You know, I'll pass on some a little bit to him. But those guys, you know. If you hadn't bodied Seymour or Seahorn the way you maybe, did, maybe, maybe it'd be some maybe, corners maybe. flipping you something, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. You've had some quarterbacks in your days that love golf, right? You had some good golfing quarterbacks, right? You had Kyle Orton. Yep. You had uh, Peyton. Yep. Trent Dilfer, all mm-hmm. good golfers. Yep. Who's the most – who takes losing the worst of those three? Or who do you like to take money from the most? Uh, I mean, I love taking money from Peyton the most. Who takes losing the worst? I would say Kyle Orr. I would have yeah. guessed that. Yeah. I mean, he's the biggest baby. You know, he's just like a, the biggest baby. He just goes like in the tank. You know, that's I, yeah, him. I know. Like Peyton, Peyton's the most fun to take money from because it's hard to get his money. I mean, he's a grinder. He, he's going to make that. He's going to chip in for par when you think he's out of the hole. He's going to make a 40-footer for bogey when I'm thinking I'm going to just got a two-putt to beat him. That's what he does. But But – like Kyle is the biggest just baby. He's just the biggest baby. Uh, Peyton, but when Peyton loses, like you know, what would you expect to when Peyton loses? Like he's just like you know, class, like, class. Yeah, he's always class, and even on the golf course. And I want him to be upset, but he's not. He's just like you know, he takes it. Is you know he's pissed. You know he's pissed. But he he hates to lose, it. but he handles it the right way. Like Kyle Orton doesn't. Orton you know spent, it. Orton spent some time in Dallas, and I'm pretty sure Jerry just signed his check over to me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't take losing that. I love well. that guy. Right. And right. it's right. always just right. like you had all these quarterbacks, right. but it's always someone else's. Right. You know, it wasn't fair. Right. Someone else's. Oh, bad. Yeah. Caddy gave me a shit read yep. on the last. Bad you know, read. Bad yeah. read. Uh, I was just. I knew it was going to be Kyle. I just wanted to hear. Uh, that's right. <laughs> all right, next one. You're you're a great follow on Twitter. You're not scared to, to go at some guys every once in a while yep. when they come at you. I want to know off the top of your head, meanest thing anyone's ever said to you on Twitter. Oh my gosh! Um, wow. That you could, I, I mean, you could say a lot of things on this right. show that you most likely can. Wow. Say. I mean, I, I, I can't remember them all, uh, but it, it's a lot. I mean, just people, top quick one. I got nothing. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know. I mean, what, what's the you worst suck. thing that you can think of? Like, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. I mean. But the worst thing that you can think of, you get it all on Twitter. Yep. You know, you get it all, especially, you know, I do radio now, so I got to, I got to be opinionated. Opinionate. Oh, here we go. Cool. What, cool what I tell you, bro. 
opinionated. There you go. There you we got to slow it down. Got to slow it down. Got to slow it down. See, that's speak. why I like radio. Yeah. Like I like radio because I can do that and kind of you we we could can joke edit about this, it. But we're not going. No, to. we don't yeah. need to edit it. That's what I do. Um, but so so but people take it. You know, however you, however they want. And I, I've had a few that um, you know I've taken the wrong way. But it's it's yeah. What it, whatever the worst that you can think of. Is he what goes, I get on he Twitter. goes on yeah. Twitter. If you're you not do. following him, it's follow him at Brandon Stokely. B Stokely 14. Is that it? B Stokely, B. Stokely 14. 14. I mean, get it right. Some I mean, poor guy named Brandon, Brandon, Brandon Stokely. Stokely. Right. Did you do your homework? I don't even follow I mean, him. I don't, need that, I don't need that bullshit takes in my life. All right. I think I asked this to Adam Thielen when he came on. And yeah, Thielen are, on. Love Thielen. Yeah, you're not Thielen. even the Thielen. best. Huh? You're not even the best guy. The best oh. catcher of the rock. And Larry, too, bro. No, You're Larry's in elite the best. company. Larry's the best. Y'all are similar. Right. You and Thielen, except Well, that's why I'm, he's better. I'm low on the total. I, look, good I looking. got no ego. So I'm good. I made the cut. That's what it's like. You know, sometimes... Hey. Sometimes you, you don't, you know, with, with with certain things, you don't make the cut, and and like maybe you're the last, you know, alternate or whatever. As long as you make the cut, it's you got all a good. jersey, you're right. suited up. That's you're it. Here. That's it. I'm asking. You're, hey, you're in the top 100. You're like our 97th episode. That's perfect. You're yeah, close top to 100. Perfect. We that, saved that's it. You for the centennial. That's but right. Didn't. But I'm going to ask you what I asked him. Which do you think describes you best on the football field? Sneaky fast, <laughs> lunch pail guy, <laughs> high IQ guy. Or plays with a lot of heart. Um, Which how about, one are how you? about coach on the field? A coach on the field. Uh, coach on There's the field. There's also uh, someone you'd like your daughter to date. That's a good one, but that ain't you. Those are all the adjectives used to describe. Give, give them to me again. One more time. Like you. Sneaky fast. Yep. Okay. Lunch pail guy. All right. High IQ guy. Or plays with a lot of heart. All of the above. Yeah, you that's what I felt like I was. All of the above. I don't know. I mean, I tried to just be a good teammate and and play hard and do the little things that kind of get overlooked, right? I mean, I was. I mean, look, that I wasn't the fastest guy, but you try to do the little things and 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 do the right things, and that's kind of how you survive and move on. So all the above. Those are the only descriptors it could be. For, right. For that's guys it. Like that's you, right. That's you know it. That's I mean? it. That's I mean, there's it. nothing Thielen, else really. Thielen's sneaky fast. He runs yeah. like a four, four and been right. doing it for friggin' right. 12 yeah. years. But, but, but you know, he's, figured it out. you look at him, you say, okay, well, he's not the fastest guy, but it's still well, sneaky somehow right. after a decade. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Coach I, on the field. I can't believe we've almost made it through this whole pod without you asking a question about the locker room. What locker room? Just people, guys running around naked. That's kind of your thing. I don't, mm. I don't really talk about naked. You oh, want to you talk like about that? naked no, you. I don't it's like you. to talk about naked guys. You want it? No, that's always no, I don't like to. No, I don't like doing that. <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't thing. like talking about Wait naked we guys. Get to the, but, we ain't done know. with the E9 yet. That's true. Right. All right, your life is on the line. You have to pick a winner in the 40-yard dash, Peyton or Tom Brady. <sighs> but just go back a few years for yeah. Peyton. Since no, I know. I mean, no, it's Peyton Manning. He's faster than Tom? Oh, yeah, no doubt. He's like a giraffe. If you watch Peyton early in his career, that guy can run. Wow, that's that guy could move. Me. I thought it'd be really and you, close. And but. you watch Tom early in his career. Like I was watching Tom on his deal that he has now, and he had a, that first Super Bowl. He had a like chubby face. Now you look at him now, like obviously oh, his dude. diet and stuff. He's chiseled, but you look at him early. He like he had a little chubby face, yeah. uh, and he, when he came out, you know, Tom couldn't run. It's it's Peyton Manning. I don't I don't think that's He's debatable. On the wow, okay. Kardashian program over he gets younger every single year yeah no i mean the way that he takes care of his body now i mean he, he he's unbelievable i mean to still be doing what he's doing right now i mean you it's 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 remarkable yeah. it really is remarkable but but peyton's faster than brady okay he's like the j-lo jennifer aniston of athletes every year you look i'm like damn right Better still doing the year still before doing. i mean that guy i don't know how old he is but he he, he can still play two or three years because his That's mind cool. mentally mm -hmm. and the way that he gets rid of the football 43 or 44, yeah. Yeah. He wants to play till 50. He's doing That's it. Great. He don't take many hits. Or they flag him if he does. Uh, I was going to ask you about the slapping, but we, we covered that pretty good. So I'm going to ask you, who's more likely to get him, or who are you most likely to get invited to their birthday party, Melvin Gordon or Von Miller? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you had some good ones with them. I had an audible quick. I hot out. I Omaha that shit right there. I Omaha. Um, I saw that you and Melvin Gordon one. That didn't go. Yeah, yeah don't those yeah, acting well, fools, man. Well, you know, I mean, look, I do radio, okay, in Denver. So you gotta be, you gotta opinionated. be opinionated. On, opinionated. See, I got it now. It takes yep. me, sometimes it takes me a couple times, just like my golf swing. But mm -hmm. once I get it dialed in, you're in trouble. Locked in. You're in trouble. Um, Von Miller. Me and Vaughn were teammates in 2012. And, you know, I said when I started doing radio that I thought Vaughn should be traded in 2000. And I think 2016 or 17, 17, 2017. But I said it out of respect to him. 
uh, because I thought he was the best asset on the team, and they could get a Khalil Mack t- type of type of deal for him and get a couple first rounds. I didn't see the Broncos going anywhere, uh, which turned out to be pretty, pretty prophetic. True. Pretty yeah. prophetic. Yeah. You what, can use that on radio. There we later go. On. Yeah, yeah, whatever that means. Yeah, You're right a prophet. there. Prophet. Right. Yeah. Right. Turned out to I'll be like spot on. Car. Right. Yeah. And but it was like he was the best player. You can get something for him. Let him go. He he's still in his prime and and do something. And I think he heard about it. And I don't know if he heard the reason and why. Right. It's like, you're the best player here. That's why I think you probably should be traded because I don't see the Broncos going anywhere. We have since made amends. I think he was upset about it, but we have since made amends. And we were teammates in 2012, his second year in the NFL. So and look, it's, it's never personal, you know, but some guys hear things on Twitter or whatever. And I think Melvin Gordon heard something that I said on, on the radio. And, but I, I don't know Melvin Gordon, uh, but me and Vaughn are good. So I'm going to say Vaughn. Okay. Vaughn, yeah. yeah. Perfect. All right. Next one. Good? You squashed it. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. We're good. We, we, yeah, we, we talked at Canton Peyton's. Mm. Hall of Fame. We talk, so I, we're 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 good. Okay, it's a good guy to have on your team. Yeah. yeah. All right. Number seven. True or false? You are a part of the most vicious attack on a man in the history of Pine Valley Golf Club. Ooh. Pine Valley, vicious attack. What'd you do? Um, I have played Pine Valley, which was really fun. By the <laughs> way, uh, I was those trees. There's a lot of trees. a lot of them, bro. A lot of trees. A lot of trees. Right. I didn't know going up there. You know, you always see it's like this. You know. It's always ranked in the top three, you know, that and Augusta and Cypress and Pebble. And um, it's like, okay, that's really cool. It's going out to New Jersey and like, oh, my gosh, there's Pine Valley. There's a lot of pine trees. That's More why they call it. Valleys, yeah. Right, that's why they call it Pine Valley. Uh, and I was in those things, and you got to just – you can't go – you just got to punch it out. You got to take your medicine and punch it out. Um, that is false. Well, Go, what's a, your what's friend, a rumor? What's the rumor? What, what you happened? You stabbed someone with a golf tee. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> damn! So almost well, well, murder. Well, 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 well there people. was a. Um, can I? You want me to call the guy out? Yeah, yeah. he wants me. There's to a guy out. There's a guy out in Denver. Um, Scott Ryman. That we were there at Pine Valley, and uh, he's a pretty good guy. Pretty, pretty solid dude. Decent, decent guy. And so he was in our group, and he likes to do. Um, don't do it to me. He likes to do the titty twist. <laughs> yeah, don't, See that don't, thing don't right there? Well, so I just said, wanted to show you, right? How did that feel? Yeah, thank you. How did that feel? I can take it because I'm a unit. But it doesn't feel good. <laughs> no, right? it, it hurt feel, me, actually, if I'm being right, honest. Right, it doesn't feel good. So he likes to do that. So, so you know, I'm on the tee box. Just I'm, I'm just trying to hit the dang fairway, right? I'm, I'm focused. I'm trying to hit the dang fairway. I probably had a couple doubles in a row. And I'm like, it, it, I'm like, I'm just ready. And I got my ball and my tee in my hand right here, right? I'm like... This guy comes at me right now. I got him. I got him, right? So, I, I, yeah, I got awareness. That's one thing. The yeah. other thing is awareness is really high. High IQ guy. Yeah, high IQ guy, right? And so, I'm like here, and he's over here, and he comes to do it, and I back away, and I get him with the with the T on the arm, and the next thing you know, blood starts mm. dripping down the arm. But, hey, hey he sent me a picture. It was yeah, pretty deep. Look like a bullet. Well, bullet hey, hey, I mean that was that was the price you pay. That's true, right? Like Titty if you go for no that, joke. right? He got the T to the arm, and guess what? He's never tried it again. Exactly. That's Sometimes it. You, you got to smack. You got to teach him a lesson. Sit around a little right, bit. Right. Right. You can't just up. keep getting bullied. Yeah. That might go in that Pine Valley Book of Legends. Right. You, know, right. <laughs> you mess with the bull. Right. You're gonna get the horns. Exactly. That's you it. finished That's it. You, it. you know it. You know it. You know it. All right, next one. We alluded to it earlier. How many years of prison do you think you would have gotten for murdering <laughs> me with this gold five iron? This is the closest attempt at murder this, I've this ever seen. This was on, on hole. A... Uh, I'll never forget it. This was on hole at Cherry Creek. Four. Uh, on, on four, right after the par three. And, uh, you know, this was back when I wasn't playing that much golf, honestly. And uh, my game wasn't as good as it is now. And so <laughs> I think I had like a five iron in on a par four. And, uh, you know, I usually play a little cut. I just kinda, a baby one, Colt. Just a baby cut. Just a couple yard Logan. cut. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, you know, so I was aiming left and Drew was over there somewhere, like over there. And I kind of hosel rocketed a little bit, a little low laser and uh i really thought i was going to kill drew and it was going at those calves of his ankle yeah. calves you know those that right snap and, like and, a and, twig right bro. right yeah it would have shattered the tibia it would have shattered I the never, tibia i could have never walked no 
It would have shattered. If I didn't bleed out right there. Right. It would have. And uh, this uh, was that our first round play this together? literally the first day I met him. He had hit the fairway. I'd hit it way further uh, in the fairway, yeah, obviously. That's true. And that still was true. plays a 40 yard, it was 500. Back then, but not, not, any, not anymore. Not, it's so I'm up there. I've never played. I've only seen him for a couple holes. But, dude, I'm in a spot where, like, you and me, you would never even think that, like, yo, this is a problem oh, area that to head be on in. swivel, Slays. Right. And I'm sitting there. And I'm talking. I got a buddy in the car. I'm talking all this shit. Yeah, I'm, like, not paying. Like, just tell this freaking diva over here to hurry up and hit the ball <laughs> i turn around and this thing's airborne and it doesn't get more than knee high and yeah. it's going 150 miles an hour yeah. Yeah. and i shit you not if i i've made an unbelievable yeah. dude foot no speed, no that's respect speed. that's respect yeah yeah shuttle and, and, drill i would have had right ever since then i ducked it he did and it, i shit you not as my closest near death yeah. on the golf course yeah. of all they, like, he did 30 that's, minutes hey, into like meeting you you know i don't like to give you credit but that i look mm -hmm. i i've seen some great athletes mm -hmm. I have, and that move that you made right there to save your leg, which uh, I need, right, which was is 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 top three all time. Thank you. Yep. that means top a lot. Three. That means because, a lot. I thought your shot deserved better than where it went to. It was pretty good strike. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was scary, you know, because when you hit a shot like that as a as a golfer like me, you know, you because I hit those shots, you know, occasionally, occasionally you get like you just you get weak. And, and, and I just, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to kill this guy. I just met him. And, but, but your athleticism took oh, over so quick, and bro. next thing you know, it was fine. He jumped over it, moved. It was, it was, my heart uh, was beating the Red oh Bulls kicking. Gosh. I mean, I was right. about to go out of my chest. Yeah. 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 The I'm, hosel was, rocket five iron. That's when I knew yeah. we were, forever, and that's when we made uh, yeah. we, we, that relationship was you cemented there. The foot speed. Yeah, there it was. Yeah. Yep. I haven't seen well, that you know, since Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison mm -hmm. and Drew Stoltz right that's, there. That's the only two. That's it. That's right. It. That's the Top two. List. Right. Bam. Got it. I love it. All right. Last one for me. We're going we're to do a little math here. Oh, oh God. Shit. Louisiana. <laughs> no, math, math, is my, math is actually my good subject. Okay. So right. let's go. All right. What's the bigger uh, number? Uh, Sleeze and Peyton Manning's fitted hat size combined oh, gosh. or Shaq's shoe? Oh, oh uh, shit. No, it's, 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 Drew, it's Drew and Peyton's hat size. It's not even close. <laughs> I mean, Peyton's got the biggest head. It's fucking and huge. How big is it? I don't know. I don't know. Like, he can't, like, even when he wears hats, he's got to put them up there. It's like, dude. He took like, the helmet off, and it looked like someone, like, had put a hole in his head. With and we hammer. always made fun of him about it. Yeah. But not, but behind his back. Cold. But behind his back. Of course. You don't ever say it to his face. But he had to know, like, like when you take your helmet off, like, that spot, like, can you not get a bigger helmet? I don't know. It seemed I mean, like it didn't like, fit. When it was cold, it like stayed permanent. Oh, right. Hot weather, it would pop back out a little right. bit. It would be all right. But it was just like red right and he here. he needs to get that hat on quick on the sideline to cover right. it up, but he didn't. No, he wouldn't do it, and it kind of became his like his trademark. The, what, the red spot right there. The red spot on his head and uh, you know, just getting getting hats and getting his helmet. Like I don't, I don't know. I've never asked him, why didn't they just make a bigger helmet? That actually fits. That you. might be it. That might be as big as it gets. That just can't do it. Yeah, like a rhinoceros helmet. Right. We that's make it. For right. those. That's, it. that's human it. Hats. It's, But it's Peyton Manning. Yeah, true. You got to do a special specialty. special helmet, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Rydell or whoever. I mean, do a special helmet for him, and they just never did it, and it just became his kind of thing. Is the red mark right there? Right there, uh, dude. How you think it's an accident? He's calling. He's reading all these defenses before it happens. He's got a big computer up there. Oh, I mean, it's the big biggest ever. That's it's always NASA. working too. It never stops. It's mm -hmm. always. It doesn't matter if you're on the golf course or if you're in practice or if you're at dinner. It's always like always computing things. The guy never forgets anything either. Yeah, never forgets mm. anything except when he got me bitched. Right, he, he forgot, forgot that, that all of a sudden. He forgot. It. Yeah, he for, yeah, he knows it too deep down in his heart. He knows he screwed me. Yeah, he probably can't sleep at night. No, about that. no, he knows he He's screwed a, me. Life had. I would. I, I think I would have had like twenty four catches that game. He screwed. Could have broke more. I would have broke the record. I would have broke that record ball too. Right. Yeah. I would actually kept that one. Shit, bad break, kid. I know. We appreciate the story you. of my life. You. You're the best bad in the break. world. You're now I'm sitting with y'all. Thank you for joining us, Stoke. <laughs> appreciate y'all, man. Wow. Finally, yeah. I made it. I made it. <laughs> well, that was a fun one with the raging Cajun, Brandon Stokely. Uh, you two are brothers, I'm pretty sure. Dude, we're, it's, there's a lot of similarities there. A lot of great athletes. He turned out to be in the league. I didn't quite get my shot the same way he, he did. He Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Yeah, Super Bowl. <laughs> I didn't get to link up with Peyton Manning and just spoon-fed me touchdowns over and over throughout my career. But it was cool getting some Peyton stories in there. This is the first time I'd asked him this. I'd alluded to it in the, fact, or in the past. But the past when Peyton Manning broke Dan Marino's you know, single-season touchdown record, I knew because Stokely caught it. And he had a good wide receiving core up there in Indy. And I was like, I knew because how close they were mm -hmm. that 
it was Peyton was that good that he could like who do I want to catch this basically and then we actually got the story about it there with the smash smash and then Stokes the only one that knows about it how about the fact that how close they are and he hasn't been on the Manning cast yet shocking shock because he's out of the league you don't have to worry about the Manning curse they are legitimately best friends we didn't get into this part too on the show but like when Peyton left Indy and there was a bunch of teams going after him obviously Stoke was a enormous part of why he ended up landing in Denver I Coming out, that. staying yeah. with him, the family, how great of a town it is, golf, all that stuff. Like, Stoke was the Broncos' best recruiter. We probably owe a Super Bowl. Stoke should be up in that ring of honor just for, for bringing him I don't think Denver. he And I don't think he ever gave us quite a definitive answer, but I asked, you know, you and Peyton's fitted hat size mm. added together or Shaq shoot. Shaq wears like a 24. Yeah. He said, he said I think he said the over. That's, he said y'all said I mean, I don't know. Peyton's looks like he's got a pretty impressive dome on him. I gotta think I haven't worn a fitted in forever, like a new era. You're I gotta at least think, an eight. I'm close to an eight. There's I, a lot of shit going, going on up here, dude. But Peyton's is more, I feel like, this way, like rectangular. Mine's just t- massive circumference. My favorite part of the Manning cast that I've watched so far is when Eli asked Ray Lewis, he goes, Would you rather have one of Peyton's helmets full of quarters or ten thousand cash? <laughs> yeah, I thought that that's, was a hell, that's a good E9 yeah. question. There's only one way to settle this, dude. We gotta get him sitting right here. Don't yep. worry, I'm talking to Brandon about that. We may have to fly up to Denver to the three oh three to make that happen. But uh we will work on it. And dude, we got into the there at the E nine. The first round of golf I played with Brandon so I swear to God, my closest near death experience. I don't think that story did justice to it. This was a rifled five iron going hundred and forty miles an hour that would have ended the safest thing for you that could have gotten hit was your head. It would have just, it wouldn't have been a problem, but it wasn't that high. He didn't get it in the air enough. And then that would have just derailed an enormous Jiggy Jack career, which would have changed the landscape of golf. But that was a fun one. That one's going to be a tough one to mm-hmm. follow. He's a beast. I tell you what, Sleaze, it's, you know, kind of like Taylor Gooch, kind of like Jason Kokrak. We're kind of sad the fall's over because that means no more golf because we have been hot with FanDuel. But just starting to do good. But the good news is. We got the NFL, which we don't know shit about. Does do you think that's going to stop me at all from relentless firing this entire holiday season? Nope, not at all. And the NFL playoffs are almost here. And to help you stay on top of the action, FanDuel Sportsbook is giving you a ten dollar bonus when you place twenty dollars in same game parlay bets. These are your favorites. Hello, Lisa. sweetheart. All you got to do is bet on a single game or spread, or spread your bets across multiple matchups. It's up to you. As long as you bet twenty bucks in same game parlay, same game parlays during the same week of NFL action. You're getting a ten dollar bonus. Okay, I'll be this honest. This is what we do. This is what we do. I have not done one of these same game parlays yet. This is going to be my first. You're welcome to the party. So, uh, we were you like here crack? The show. It was like a first taste of crack. <laughs> I don't know if I like crack. You'll like it. Trust me. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, I'm just going to go with my team. I'm a diehard Cowboy fan. I'm Surprising. just going to go with them. Here we go. So, we got the Giants this week, Sunday. Pretty much going to. We pretty much already have locked up the division, but this would probably definitely do it. We're going to be so far ahead. Everybody else is not going to matter. So, the Giants are shitty. They're, Correct. They're terrible. So I'm going Cowboys to win by 14 or more. Okay. Bit a lot of points. Okay. We we played an awful second half this last week against the football team. We're gonna Mike McCarthy's gonna have them ready to go. We're gonna finish the race. They're they're gonna be minus five and a half in the second half. So they're gonna cover that, and they're gonna come out hot and win the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Win by 100 if you want to add that <laughs> yeah. in. You get plus 8 billion. That's a good line to hit. All right. Well, welcome to the party, dude. It's good to have you. The water's warm. You're going to love it here. Mm-hmm. I'm also going to fire off a little same gamer here. I'm going with a team we've been waiting on for a while, and they're coming. They're back. I've been waiting for it. They've been a sleeping giant, Kansas City Chiefs. So I'm going with them right now. First and foremost, they're going to win by three and a half. Okay. Playing San Diego Chargers at San Diego, giving three and a hook. First off, they're the L.A. Chargers. Oh, yeah. If they're playing San Diego, it's going to be a problem. It could, yeah. Maybe <laughs> this is a neutral site down in San Diego. All right. They're playing the L.A. Chargers. Excuse me. They're three and a half point faves. I'm going to go ahead and lay the three and a hook, okay, because they're coming. This last week, they were extremely impressive. I'm going to go with your boy on your fantasy squad, Austin Eckler, to score mm. a TD, which seems like any time they score, he's pretty much a part of it. you got to be careful. I, I hope he does because he is on my fantasy team. He got a little banged up this past week. Okay, I'm going to really need him to be playing. <laughs> I'm going to need you to talk to him and say, gut it out, get in there, Varsity Blues, give him one of those shots they were given to Lance Harbor, get in the game. Uh, he's going to score a tub, so that's second leg. And then total points. Chiefs can give up some points. They're not afraid to do that. That's fine. But the offense is going right now. I'm going over 50 and a half. Uh, total total points scored. So that's the the sleazy same game parlay of the week. And it, I, trust me, it's not going to be the only one. But. I love this so much. If this one hits, I will fall out of this chair. You just Austin Eckler got hurt. Uh, the Giants, or sorry, the Patrick Mahomes will probably sit. The Chiefs defense has given up 
nine points three games in a row. Yeah, they're vulnerable <laughs> right now, dude. That's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> this is awesome. I love it. <laughs> well, FanDuel Sportsbook is America's number one sportsbook. Nothing better. It's easy to use. Fast payouts. You get your payouts within two hours. It's safe and secure. Nothing better. Go check out the FanDuel Sportsbook. And this same game parlay bonus is live through week 15. So lock in some winners today and enjoy a $10 bonus on FanDuel. Are you new to FanDuel Sportsbook? Sign up today with promo code SUBPAR to also receive a free, risk-free bet up to $1,000. That's promo code SUBPAR so they know that we sent you. Exclusively on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Must be 21 years and older, present in Arizona, Connecticut, or New Jersey. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in seven days. Max bonus $10. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342. One or one eight 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 seven eight nine seven 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 seven, or visit ccpg.org backslash chat or one eight hundred gambler or visit fanduel.com backslash rg. Woo! If you have Did an it. erection for more than four hours, call your doctor. <laughs> yeah, my goodness gracious! <laughs> Which you might when these yeah. same game parlays hit. Well, get amongst it with our guys over. We might FanDuel. bankrupt Fanduel after this. It could be a short. Dude, we've hit dude. three out of four winners in golf. I mean, Jeez. that's just not normal. We're batting seventy five percent. I mean, what? I mean, that's Billy. Walters. So we might as well just carry it over. Billy to, Walters oh, type stuff. God, we might as well just carry it over to football. Might as well. Well, listen, the hits keep coming here at Golf Sub Park. Because if you just laughed your ass off there with Brandon Stokely, get ready. Because next week we got a true comedian in the house, Bill Ingvall, blue you, collar comedy. And you can understand him. He doesn't have a Cajun accent. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier. But Bill Ingvall in the house. We get into the blue collar comedy tour, one of the biggest, highest grossing comedy tours, I believe. Uh, of all time, how he got started, and a huge golfer with your former partner down at Disney back in the day when they used to have the pro am. Y'all, y'all figured it out down there. I think first round leaders, whatever, yep. no big deal. It so a lot of golf, from there. a lot of funny, you know, behind the scenes of the comedy, which I could, th- I, I mean, just, it was a pleasure having him on. All right, well, that's gonna do it for us. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on next week's golf subpar. <laughs>